It seems like every time that there is um, a change in culture or a change in um, the reality around us that I hear a lot of Christians um, getting very bent out of shape and, and very vocal about things. Um, and this goes hand in hand with what I talked about last time about um, not separating your Christian rights from your American rights. For instance, just because you have the right as an American to public speech doesn't mean that you should say a bunch of dumb things according to your Christian rights. Once again, remember your Christian rights above your American rights. Okay, um, It's more important that you are a Christian um, um, than that you're an American, but for a lot, for some reason, we've been holding that backwards. I'm an American first, and then a Christian. Or you can't be a Christian without being an American. You're a Christian first, and you know there's a lot of things that we could say that we shouldn't say right? because of gossip, because you know um, of more damage caused than good. You know, there's just a lot of different things. Being wise with our words, making wisdom presentable, that kind of stuff. Um, and so I, I want to talk a little bit about not making the, the, the small things into big things. Um, basically, a plea against ranting. If you will, a rant against rants. Um, I'm going to try not to rant, though. Um, and, uh, well, okay. So, uh, you know, the thing with Starbucks Red Cup and everybody throwing a fit, and, you know, honestly, I, I've seen a lot of... It's, it's almost like everybody's on edge this year, um... So let's look at this. They took Christ and Christmas away. Okay. Um, a lot of times people throw big fits about Starbucks not representing Christmas or Christ or anything like that. And yet they are okay with a Christian company presenting their Christian values. Well, there's a little bit bias there. You know, um, first off, the government should have no say so in this kind of stuff. I think that's obvious. The government's job is to govern, so let's get that out of the way now. Now let's go down to the specifics of Starbucks. Starbucks is a non-Christian company. You know, why should why should they have to show Christian things? Okay, now I'll get more into this in a minute, but it's America. I mean, this is supposed to be the land of the free. You should be free to show or to not show whatever thing you want to show for uh, for things for religious or other reasons. I mean, as long as we're not causing physical harm to other people, why make it a thing? So Starbucks doesn't want to show their Christian roots. Uh, Chick-fil-A should show their Christian roots if they so desire. See what I mean? They, they, it's about freedom and equality. 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 Um, also, I, I found it funny that so many people were upset about the, the red cup issue when Starbucks symbol is, I mean, so worldly and pagan. A uh, little bit of bias there. Um, also, keep in mind that, that as Christians, we're called to love enemies and bless those who curse us. Don't forget that. Now, Starbucks isn't cursing us. Okay, so let's put that, let's get that out, out in the open. But, however, even if they were, our job would, would be to love and to bless them, not to not to judge and get all hateful. That make sense? Um, now, obviously, we are there is. I'm not saying there should be no judgment within the, within the Christian churches. Everybody is making a judgment call every time that they talk. That's just philosophy 101. However, um, there's a difference between being judgmental and judging something. So let's kind of separate those two things. Um, and and so don't make mountains out of molehills. Every single time there's something that comes up that you don't like, you don't have to be so vocal and ignorant about it. I mean, honestly, even if, you, let's say you have you have the truth and everybody else is wrong, you still don't have to be so arrogant about it. Um, so then that brings us to the question, well, what about boycotting Starbucks? That's a little extreme. And, and why don't you boycott Walmart and McDonald's and all the other all the other places? Why don't you only do business and business with Christians? Because, I mean, if you live in the world, you're going to have to have dealings with non-Christians. That's just the way that it is. Um, this is actually similar to what the Corinthian church is going through in 1 Corinthians when he says, you know, I didn't tell you to abstain from these people or else you'd have to go out of the world. I told you not to partake, you guys not to do this. Um, so, I mean, that goes right hand in hand with this. I mean, if, if you want to separate yourself from every everybody who does anything non-Christian, you're going to have to not even live in the world as not even Christians do things that are Christian a lot of the times. Keep that in mind. Christ came to save the unrighteous. And when we start thinking that we're so righteous, we completely miss the point of grace. Okay? Um, 
This isn't legalism. This isn't a works-based salvation. This is a grace-based grace salvation. So let's remember that. Um, also, there's been a lot of ignorant people trying to spread rumors just to prove their point. Oh, well, Starbucks said this and Starbucks said this. No, they didn't. Check into the facts before you make the claim. Okay, um, And so all you do when you post this kind of dumb stuff on your Facebook is you make yourself seem uncreditable. Basically, people can't depend on you to have something um, true, just to have something based off of emotion. Um, we need to show ourselves as people who actually have a brain, as a lot of times, for some reason, Christians have this idea that they have to shut up their brain, as though science in the entire world disproves, disproves God, and so we have to close our eyes tight just to blind ourselves from that. Well, no, actually, no. Um, so anyways, that doesn't help anybody. People are concerned with facts, not with bias. Or at least they should be. Um, also, keep in mind that Christ Christmas was instituted on a non-Christian holiday. So is it that big of a deal that the world has their non-Christian thing? Um, also, I'll, I'll talk about this elsewhere to greater lengths. Also, don't forget that the birth of Christ was never the central aspect. It was the resurrection and the death of Christ that was the most focused on. And second to that would probably be his second coming. Then his ascension, probably. Then his life, probably. And then probably last off his birth. I mean, it was important, uh, the virgin birth, that was important, but it wasn't the most important thing. The virgin birth didn't save us from sin. It was Christ's death and resurrection that, that changed things. You see what I'm getting at here? Christmas is a, is a whole month celebrating Christ's birth, the least important of the aspects of Christ. Not really worth getting that offended about. Once again, though, it was on a non-Christian holiday. So if the world doesn't partake of Christmas, once again, not that big of a deal. Um, also, keep in mind this. Why should the world have to support, agree, and conform to the church's standard? Aren't, aren't you the same people saying that... Um, the church shouldn't have to conform to the world's so, uh, um, um, conform, support, and agree to the world standard. Well, shouldn't it be the same vice versa? You aren't saved by 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 your by your works. You're saved by either you are or are not a Christian. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. That is what makes you a Christian. Not doing the holidays and all this nonsense. So we've made big deals out of small deals rather than loving people, rather than serving people, rather than witnessing to people. See, that's what makes difference. You, you, you want to put Christ back in Christmas, go feed the homeless. You want to put Christ back in Christmas, go love someone who society says is unlovable. Go to an, go to an orphanage, go to, an, go to a, a, a nursing home, go to the hospital, spend time with the downcast. That is how you put Christ back in Christmas. Um, and I'll talk about this elsewhere, but Xmas doesn't... I don't even have time to get into that. Um, let people know what you stand for, not always against. There is a balance here. Oh, well, I need to tell them their sin, and, and, and I need to tell them about how they're going to end up in hell. Yeah, that's one way, but that's very untactful. And by the way, people historically have not been converted to true Christianity on the basis of fear, but on the basis of love, God's Kindness leads people to repentance. Why did he even send the prophets in the Old Testament? To warn people, to draw them away from, from destruction, because he loved them. See, once again, people take this way out of context. So I need to tell people that they're stuck in sin, they're going to hell. <sighs> no. No. When Paul went and evangelized to people, did, did he tell people about Jesus, or did he tell people about hell? See, tell people what you stand for, Jesus Christ, not what you're against. That makes sense? Um, I found a lot of self-righteous uh, Christians exist in the American church, and a lot of them feel that it's like, it's like they have a need to say dumb stuff. If they go for too long without shooting off their mouth about something that they're against, they feel like they are sinning. So once again, there's a balance here. Joel Osteen, for instance, only mentions grace, and these people that I'm talking about only mention sin. Well, there is a balance. There is a balance. Now, you don't have to just mention one or the other. God's only love, so I'm just going to not listen to anything else. Or, you know, God, God, judgment is coming on you, and I just can't wait for it. 
No, God is being very patient, and it seems how he has, is the one who's truly been wronged. Maybe we should mirror that patience. Just throwing that out there. So, um, anyways, <clears throat> so I know this seems like a little bit off topic, but it really does it does go hand in hand with the whole Starbucks thing, uh, because you know people keep making big deals out of small things, thinking that that's going to be the the factor that le that that causes people to not be saved. It's going to be that, that one thing. And it's like, well, no, not really. In fact, I'll go a step further. I've seen more people saved and brought into, into the church by Christians acting loving and serving people, even though they didn't agree with them, than, that, um, than yelling at them. And I do want to point that out. <laughs> We're always talking in the, in the church about how you don't have to agree with someone to accept them, you know what I mean? Um, how coexist doesn't mean that you condone every view that someone else has. That's relativism, not coexistence. Um, and yet we do the same thing in the church world, don't we? You have to conform to this, you have to do this, you have to do this. Okay, I'm sure you see what I'm getting at here. Um, I don't really have time to develop that too much, but I'm sure if you think about what I'm saying here, you'll you'll see what I, you'll see what I'm getting at here. Um, <laughs> I mean, we do the exact same things that we that we are condemning someone else for, you know. Um, like, oh, these these Christians only mention grace. Well, you only mention sin. So you're doing the exact same thing. Um, you don't have to accept someone to you don't have to agree with someone to accept them, and yet you're telling people who come into the church that you have that they have to um, to um, change before you accept them. A little bit hypocritical there. Um, we need to be careful, especially in such dark times, to be the light of the world. Okay, something that shines light, something that a peacemaker, something that makes peace in a chaotic situation. And not a wildfire. Keep in mind there's a difference. <laughs>